This video is brought to you by Rocket Money, people. What is going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? Greg and John are back at it because we are going to do some Super Bowl trailer catch up here. We're only going to watch three of them and we're going to go in this exact order Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, our first look at Wicked, and then Twisters. So we'll react, talk a little bit, react, talk a little bit, react, talk a little bit. But you know what to do. Leave a like on this video. That'd be very much appreciated. Also, just want to give a quick mention. There's going to be an announcement coming very, 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 very soon. Maybe a little bit later today. About an exclusive private Real Rejects event involving Dune 2. We are doing giveaways for it. So keep a lookout for that. Let's go. Wow. Are you familiar uh -huh. with the concept of evolution? Oh. Edgy. <laughs> In their time, humans were capable of many great things. That's right, we were. So good. Fly. Wow, so much civilization. Damn. Speak wow. Across oceans. So the San Diego Bridge is the San Francisco one. Yes. Now it is. Hot humans. Yes. In loincloths. <laughs> and it is my kingdom. I expressions. Oh my gosh. They're just fools. We'll learn I will learn. Oh, he poses as benevolent, huh? We'll conquer. Ooh. Ooh. Get him! Ow! That's stunts on this. Says ape and human live side by side. Impossible as that may seem. I'll buy it. She's smarter than most. The elders did not tell us everything Ooh. about this world. Maybe you can finally coexist. This could be a great villain. Apes hunt humans. That is wow. wrong. Is that? Ooh. Is she from The Witcher? Oh, nipple chills! Whoa! <sighs> Damn! Oh no! Wow! Together, you will die. Gee. No, together, strong. Together, strong. Very long. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god, that looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to follow in the footsteps of Matt Reeves, you want to make <laughs> sure you can more than deliver first impressions off the bat. I mean, we're going to keep these talks short. I thought that was quite excellent. It looks like we're really tying back. We're getting closer and closer to the original 1968 timeline. I don't know the names of any of these uh, characters. I haven't looked it up. I like the the, the look of this new um, Emperor King ape like there's a barbaric apocalyptic sense it's just funny like the way civilization is moving with them of how there was a way the hum hum humanity worked cave dwellers and so then you know having civilizations the metropolises the ruins came and now the apes are here and they're following a similar trajectory of humanity yes. <laughs> with the way they build and it looks like they even have enslavement happening yeah. and then of course the tortures of uh, the human beings the way everything was progressing it was harrowing it was bleak it was epic we got new characters to get invested into the way they're going to tie it in there were parts of the CGI that felt a little bit dodgy here or there, but I think when you are lost to the emotionality of the sequences that are happening, and as, and as long as you're emotionally invested in the characters, I think that's what really counts. And uh, our, our human character, you know, woman. Fre <laughs> for Freya Allen. Freya Allen. <laughs> I completely Allen. forgot was in this. Who's Freya Allen? She's the Witcher girl. She's uh, Siri. That's Freya it's Allen. Siri with with brown hair, yes. Damn. It took me a minute. I was like, her face looks so familiar. Oh, if she was blonde. <laughs> like, yeah. She looks like an adult here. I know. Is she an adult? Or did I just make a super inappropriate comment during this trailer I reaction? I think she's an adult. We got to confirm. Let's John, you give your thoughts while Greg yes. makes sure he did not go 
it's creepy. <laughs> Full creep. You know, you want you can only go half creep yeah, on the yeah, internet. Yeah, Full yeah. creep, and then you're in some dangerous terrain. Appropriately creepy. No, I mean, I, what struck me the most about this was just how uh, picturesque it looked. And oh, thank uh, God. Oh, good. Whoo. She's way past legal. She is more than legal. <laughs> she. We you are, can lust after her. We all you are want. safe, and she's a very talented actress this too. Is so true. now more. We didn't get much out of her. Oh, she's the chosen. Chosen uh, the human chosen female human. character. She's that's her type. She's cast. the Caesar of chosen the humans now. <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> yeah, totally. She's the special. You know, uh, it'll be fun to see her. Uh, perhaps not lead. Like I don't know. That, that's an interesting kind of thing for an actor to do because you're not necessarily like leading this movie, but you are going to be like the prominent human presence whose face everybody like knows they're looking at while they're looking at it. I just loved how uh, immersed we are in. You know. This new sort of world, I, I from what I understand, I, I know precious little about this, but it's like many years into the future, just seeing what ape society has become and, you know, the way you have all these humans who are sort of, you know, living on the outskirts and, you know, just like fighting for survival as it looks like they're all being sort of rounded up. I feel like they're trying to kind of wipe them out or whatever. It seems like, you know, everyone's in hiding. So it's an interesting kind of wrap around of like, oh, the oppressed now becomes the oppressor in one way, shape or form. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it reminds me, yeah, of like the earlier apes movies where, yeah, you are just in this like post, post, post civilization. And I like the tone of stuff like that when you really feel like... Like, you know, all the familiarities of, you know, human society are like these mere distant echoes and stuff like that. Like, this has that. But I think it's genius, but the marketing, I think the last thing to say is that they have a main protagonist ape here who is not Caesar, but looks just enough like Caesar sure. that when you don't do your homework <laughs> on the movie, you might go, hey, Caesar's back. I'm going to go watch it in the, in the trailer. <laughs> Isn't making that clear either. Yeah. Smart marketing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Get people <laughs> confused enough to come in. Yeah. <laughs> What's Caesar doing all these people? Wait, uh, which one is it? <laughs> there are aspects of it that kind of remind me of Tim Burton's take on Planet of the Apes, but this looks way better. Like, there was a lot of potential for the Burton one. Sure. And this feels like, the, you know, especially hot human. Yeah, Hot human. you gotta have one. She's Mark Wahlberg. Well, what did you think about the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes trailer? Uh, are you excited for it? I'm excited for it. Pretty excited. Looks like a it. pretty epic ass film. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, let's watch the trailer for Universal's Wicked. Ooh. Universal, the king of copyright claims. <laughs> Love anything from them. We just Doesn't like to help support what. the studio. Kid you not? Sometimes, just for shits and giggles, I will stretch the footage, flip it, put a bunch of different filters <laughs> on it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> they know they it. want their dollar. I don't make those public, but sometimes I'm so I've gotten so crazy with trying to get past the copyright claim. Now I realize there's no point. Let's just Ain't play the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> but before that, all right, Reject Nation, let's get real for a moment. Running this channel is incredible, but managing finances, especially taxes and budgeting, both for the channel and my personal life, can be overwhelming. That's where Rocket Money has been a financial lifesaver for me, even before I ever partnered up with them. Like I said, I've been very fortunate to be working with brands whose products I already use, so it's a win-win for a walk. But it can be a win-win for you too, because there's a reason I use them. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that simplifies managing money by canceling unnecessary subscriptions, lowering bills, and crafting a budget that fits your specific lifestyle. For someone like me who can easily lose track of expenses throughout every single day of the month, it's been eye-opening to see where I was overspending, stuff I don't use that I kept paying for, especially apps. Man, I was way too many apps. Rocket Money does the heavy lifting by analyzing your spending, then customizes notifications to help you stay within your budget goals. It's not just about saving money. It's about actively seeing and feeling your financial progress. It's a great feeling. They track your monthly subscriptions too. So many free trials I've signed up for that I forgot to, you know, get rid of before the free trial was done. Making it super easy to cancel the ones you don't use. A couple of clicks and you're putting money back in your pocket. I'm telling you, have you ever found hidden subscriptions or paid for services you forgot about? Because Rocket Money is a huge asset in helping to uncover those and even negotiate some of my bills down to up to like 20%. So if you're ready to take control of your finances and there's no better time than now because it is the beginning of the year, check out Rocket Money and see how much you could be saving. Stop wasting money on things you do not use. So to help support the channel and help support your wallet, visit rocketmoney.com slash rejects. Rocket Money currently has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. They've helped me and I'm confident they'll do the same for you. That's rocketmoney.com slash rejects. Your bank account will thank you. The best way to bring folks together. Something Wow. To give them a real good enemy. 
Oh. Jeff. You're green. Hello. Oh my god. Yeah. Ariana Grande room. and Cynthia Erivo. Damn. Something just takes over me. And when it does, Michelle, Michelle yo. yo. Bad things happen. Once you learn to harness your emotions. Oh my god. Jeepers. Oh my god. I saw some familiar. Oh my god, the wizard! The Goldblum! It, it was Jeff Goldblum. Recognize the voice. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. Ah, we gotta defy some wizard. Gravity. should be afraid of me. Yes. Ooh. Oh, it's the great and the powerful. Ah, yeah. Where's my man Franco? Let's get him in here. <laughs> Did you see the Wicked play? I have seen it once. It's it's have been a while. You? I have got to see it at the Pantages. Really? Yeah. Did you love it? Did quite, you fall in love? It's quite dazzling. Yes. And they had you know some pretty elaborate and uh, magical stage you know uh, embellishments to make it really seem like she's flying and whatnot when the big song comes around. Well, this is a fascinating endeavor because you know we uh, we sometimes get in a day and age that we get prequels, sequels, you know, legacy prequels, legacy sequels. And this is working as one of those, but it's also an adaptation of a beloved musical. Yes. So it, there's going to be way less, you know, um, that that cautious optimism, and I imagine more enthusiasm towards it. I would and hope. I would hope. Yeah. Uh, I, it's I, a big I, deal. I didn't know it was Ariana Grande was was in this. I had no idea. And and who, who is that? Cynthia. It is Cynthia yeah. Revo. Oh uh -huh. my goodness. Oh yeah. I'm excited. Jeez. I am most excited for her. I feel like she's got the pipes. She's an amazing and, actor. And yeah. Like, I'm actually, It's. I'll, I'll, I feel like in some way, Ariana Grande is is good casting for Glinda in terms of, like, the vibe and the presence. But I am curious to see how she'll handle the songs because I, I don't have the greatest, uh, you know, knowledge of her discography and whatnot. But when I hear her sing, I don't associate her with uh, belting with that kind of power. Mm. So uh, I'm curious as to if this will show us sort of a different aspect of her vocal range besides, uh, you know, the obvious presence that she brings to the uh, to the role of Glinda, you know, in a, in a physical sense. Does it tie directly? Did they have because they have the shot here of like Tim Man, Scarecrow, and Dorothy uh, talking to the? It's straight up the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Do they? Is it, does that happen in the play? God, I can't fully recall how how far it spans i think we do go from them like in school like learning you know magic and things like that to then uh getting into some of the events of the wizard of oz but but again it's been that one time since i've seen it so this in some ways i'll have like a, a decent amount of familiarity but also will be surprised by or we'll have to go back and check certain things because i'm like i could easily see how a movie would be like well we gotta get the original characters in there well it, <laughs> it'd know? be the it, I think this is the part of the movie that could probably be the most challenging because you are straight up remaking something at this sure. point. Now, I'm not talking about the film, but it seems like it's the exact moment where they go and confront the wizard yeah. and they reveal uh, that it's Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, but, I, can't, I can't remember if maybe the, the, the show takes you through all those events, but from Elphaba's perspective or something. But from a production design standpoint, it's like the updated version of it with some of the, like, the Tin Man looks classical Dorothy's outfit, sure. but the lion is an actual, like, it's like a CGI yeah, lion. lion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Real CG, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, but I mean, it this looks like a great time, and I think you know, there's a lot of conversation about uh, do musicals still have a place in cinema? And I know Wonka did do well, it started having legs, but then there's been some other musicals like Color Purple, which did not do well. Uh, mean Girls is kind of up for debate, I think. Uh, sure. it, it, uh, but there is a conversation of like, is there a place for musicals still? And I think Wicked, because of you know how famous i had never seen it but i just didn't stop hearing about it yeah with how famous it is Culture and then you get force. ariana grande in there you know i think that even though she just lost a bunch of instagram followers i know i see some like buzzfeed posts about it oh what I, don't really do I don't know anything about it i don't know i, didn't look I mean details. all i saw was the red text uh -oh. like okay uh -oh. i don't know what she did i don't know how con i don't know anything about her I, I mean, she dated Pete Davidson once. That's about all I know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, same. I, I, I don't have en enough of her lore in mind to... Uh, I've heard some of her songs. I think sound great, but I don't know anything about like, I don't yeah. follow her career, really. Yeah. 
I mean, part of me feels like as long as Cynthia Revo is on point, because, you know, this is, you know, telling the story from Elphaba's perspective or at least give, giving her a sympathetic view instead of just being like, ah, she's wicked and evil. So uh, I feel like she has... More like Wokid. Oh, oh, Wokid. That's right. Yeah. Where's my Idina Menzel? Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel like that is the role that can make or break a movie like this. And I feel like Cynthia Erivo more than absolutely has the chops and the pipes and all that stuff. And like, she has the power. Like, I know she's got the power in her voice to really knock that out of the park. And like the imagination of how they're drawing Oz and all that stuff is pretty, uh, it looks pretty lovely here. I just hope it doesn't succumb to feeling like too much CG cotton candy. What are you talking about? We didn't, we just watch a movie that was a musical that was really nostalgia heavy. That also, that also f- felt the very same thing. CG. I don't know what you're talking yeah, I about, know, John. Think of one. No other music. No examples <laughs> come to mind. <laughs> especially for a Broadway play that had such great production design that was practical and tangible. <laughs> I want nothing more than a step into a massive CGI world. I want to go into the volume. <laughs> I want to go in the volume. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Let's watch the most anticipated trailer of 2024. Twister. I reacted to this movie here on the channel. Oh, that was a fun movie. That was a really fun movie. Wow. Wow. Whatever's in there, it's big and it's moving fast. Oh, my God. He's in it. Call the Maximals. Guys, you gotta get out of here. Can you hear me? Whoa. Whoa. Jesus. <laughs> the text. It's Tyler Owens. He calls himself the Tornado Wrangler. If you feel it. <laughs> Chase it. Oh my if God. Chase it. Go for it. All right, here we go. Oh my God. Fun. <laughs> what is he anchored to the oh, ground? She's perfect. She's gorgeous. He's the weirdest typecasting. Tornado. We never had a chance. Dorothy! Oh my god, it's evolved. You want one? Whoa. It's like that Independence wow. Day sequel. Yeah, right. You don't face your fears. Wowie. You ride him. Yeah, you do. You got a rodeo. Oh, awesome! Oh my god. We got twins! Twins! That's ah, twins! Woo! That shot of him in the rain. Wow. Oh! Is that it? Nope. Twisty <laughs> Wisty. Wow. Whoa. Wow. I hope the Twisters talk this time. I hope it's still rated PG-13 for intense depictions of bad weather. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, the t- Twisters talk. They come back. They got a, a vendetta of some kind. What's the Glenn Powell's roles? I haven't seen that movie it did with Sidney Sweeney. Yeah, yeah. But he keeps doing something that has to do with, I'll call it, I still feel like this movie belongs in the same category of Flight Man. You know, he, he was <laughs> Taco Maverick. He was the astronaut yeah. and Hidden Figures. Okay, he was in that. Yeah. Uh, he was in some other flight thingy recently. He was yeah. like literally in the, in the plane. It was the one with Jonathan Majors. What was that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Isn't that? And and now I don't know something about tornadoes and stuff there's an aerial sense to all of it <laughs> yeah he, he's a guy who's always doing some cowboy stuff and and like in some kind of like perilous situation that involves the elements, uh, elements either he's flying sky, yeah. yeah he's either flying or he's chasing something you know inclement from the sky yeah. <laughs> he's always got a cool vehicle and he's always so cool he's except just, for when he got beat up by bane what are you talking about? Oh, that that oh, that's been going around lately. Is uh, he he brought it back up in the scene where Bane goes to the stock exchange? He's the guy who looks at him and he says like, "There's no money here. You can't steal anything." And Bane responds, well, "What are you people doing here?" And then he punches him, and it cuts away before you see it hit. Oh, yeah. and he's like, "I'm gonna go to escape to my plane." Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the plane from the beginning was my plane. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, 
Twister. <laughs> this looks like a sequel to Twister in every sense. It is more Twisters. It is more tornadoes and more epicness. And it, it feels like the first movie just, you know, amped up. Just it, with it's more a, slick effects. It's, it's exactly what you'd want, you know, except it doesn't seem like there's any... So the thing that surprised me about the first movie of Twister was there's like great acting in it. Bill, and it's like a real ensemble. It's a real ensemble. There's some great personalities behind it. Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt were excellent in that movie. Mm-hmm. And as much as their romance is predictable, <laughs> uh, you still really are endeared to them. And I was surprised because I just wanted to see like things get caught in a tornado. And then I was surprised by how invested I was in the journey and the weird scientific mumbo jumbo they were doing. And then apparently learning how some of it, they tried being as authentic as possible. And I thought that was really fun. And here, I think they are, I I don't know what they're going to do, but this feels more like a Roland Emmerich movie. Feels more like a blockbuster movie than than a disaster movie. But at the same time, it is how Twister was advertised. So, sure. uh, you know, it's like you it, when you're going to say Twisters, they want, they want to deliver on. We're going to get bigger and crazier, and it's going to remind you of the first one, just going to have cooler visual effects. And that is essentially the vibe that I got from here was yeah. is the exact, this is almost like the exact trailer I expected. Sure, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and it's just, yeah, it's like slightly updated with just like even crazier POVs on how we could shoot a twister. And I feel yeah. like with something like this, you are kind of in a position where you have to have a certain level of camp in your formula somewhere because yeah it's like twister is the a weird movie that like works but could easily be kind of cheesy and there are elements that are like a little campy but not like so much that it's like a meta you know goofy experience so like there is kind of like a line to toe with this and i i was curious because like it started to feel like we were gonna have that ensemble vibe because you've got anthony ramos on one side then you have glenn powell on the other side who sort of feels like he's the carrie Elwes character a little bit uh, I can't really tell uh, exactly. He feels more like the. I mean, he's like Carrie Elwes and Bill Paxton. He's clearly the protagonist. I guess so. Like that's what I got confused about because we were watching this and initially it seemed like we were in the we were with the crew that had Anthony Ramos on it, but then it and they're looking over at him and he's like, oh, it's that guy, him, him, and he's got all these yeah, people around him, so they're introducing him like he's kind of a peacock. But they're clearly working together. Yeah, and so they're like two hot leads in the movie. Yeah, and then it shifted to focus, so I guess we're going to spend... I don't know, I'm curious. It, like, it seems like a cool vehicle for Glenn Powell. It, I think, would be nice... I, I don't know, I guess we'll just wait and see how the rest of the ensemble uh, plays, uh, because I feel like that is one element of the DNA of the first movie, is that you have, like, the mom, and you got Philip Seymour Hoffman, and you've got, like, the whole team and it's like there are a bunch of recognizable people across that Mm -hmm. uh so i don't know yeah they're they're like it's it's just as much about that as it is about like a maverick guy you know i'm a maverick guy (laughs) yeah i don't play by the rules and i wear a cowboy hat and i after a while risk my life start getting some like crazy professional scientists and armies involved in this (laughs) when the disasters are just getting to this point yeah, I mean, it's like ripping apart like wind power turbines and stuff. Like, it's creating real devastation. I wonder how people who actually experience tornadoes feel about the Twister franchise. They growl for people real. who have like suffered <laughs> from tornadoes, you know. They use it as exposure therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet those people are not excited for this new movie whatsoever. <laughs> uh, but hey, man. It I, looks fun. I'm looking for the Helen Hunt cameo. Make it happen. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be good. And if you haven't done it, you better H- find Helen a way. Helen Hunt cameo, Carrie Elwes cameo. Well, yeah, guys. Uh, which trailer of these three excited you the most? Leave your thoughts down below. Uh, I, mean, I think the one that I like the most. Is Game of the Planet of the Apes. It's the it's the best <laughs> yeah. rounded trailer. Yeah, maybe we should it's the most well rounded. Should have said that for last. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. sure. It's the best one. I, we don't know. We haven't seen him before, so how are yeah. we supposed to know? Cautiously yeah. optimistic for both Wicked and Twisters. I feel like there's the least uh, like heavy stakes on yeah. Planet of the Apes. Like as long as it makes it transportive, there's less to live up to in a way, in a weird way. <laughs> All righty, guys. We'll leave your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> it has been three hundred. 96 days since we have last heard from Andrew Hayes. Oh, no. 
starting to get worried, man. Andrew. I'm genuinely starting to get worried. Blink if you're with us. You have been here at our Patreon, and we have not heard from you at all. I have no idea if you are even alive. I'm going to look up your Instagram. Can we do that? Look it up. Look it up. Has he posted anything lately? Is he doing anything out here in the world? Let's get this. He's able to give us moolah, but he can't do this. Yeah, this guy. Come on. Come on. Here we go. We're going. I'm going to, I guess I won't say your uh, handle here, but yeah. Andrew Hayes. Here we go. Last post. Most recent post was on October 21st, 2023 looking okay. friendly at a bar. So maybe Andrew was kidnapped by the second to last person in the most recent photo, which was October 6th. So he was posting up until the end of October, September 30th, a consistent stream of posts at the end of 2023, and then they just stop. So one of these people is probably behind it. And we got to find out which one of these people it is. And we got to free Andrew. I mean, it looks like he's been living life. I mean, it does. But but why does it just stop here? If he's living life, there should be at least a post like halfway through November. I'm under the impression Andrew's has left his money rolling in here every month because he thinks he, he has equity in the Patreon. Yes. I, I think he <laughs> believes that there is some kind of profit that he himself is bound to one day when he pulls out he's gonna be it's like oh investment. my investment paid off yeah i have earned triple my investment i can sell my how, shares it's not how it works here buddy <laughs> it's not how it works you got to be financially responsible right now truth for as long as his patreon's around um i say still stay pledged yeah we don't, we don't even think about it. i mean we, we could literally say anything 